I have started the streaming. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I welcome you all back to this channel for this Abhyas course on fluid mechanics. Okay. So all of you, please type in the comment box. So how many of you are present? Please type in the chat box. Yes. So please type in the chat box. Are you all ready to start this fluid mechanics course and fluid mechanics problems basically on this? So please type in the chat box. Good morning, all of you. So I welcome you all onto this channel. So please type in the chat box. Am I audible to all of you? And can you all see the screen clearly? Okay. Well, so we have already started this Abhyas series, which are with in which we are actually solving problems for the some subjects as per gate 2023 pattern actually. Okay. And when we are all our team is putting a lot of efforts for putting for matching these problems with the gate 2023 problems actually. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Yes, I'm audible, right? yeah great okay so now in this course i will take you through the problems on it's a basically fluid i mean problems practice course kind of thing and in this course we actually solve problems on this fluid mechanics and normally if you talk about the weightage of fluid mechanics for gate examination this fluid mechanics comes for about some 10 marks on an average okay so sometimes 9 sometimes 11 such kind of things but on an average we'll make sure that each and every question that's coming in gate 2023 you will be definitely finding it matching with this uh, questions or at least in the least case if you can solve all these questions definitely you will have all the knowledge to solve every pyq you can try it after solving these questions you can attempt your pyqs if you have with you you will feel very confident confident in attempting the pyqs clear so shall we start this course so please tell me type in the chat box are you all ready shall we start this course on this problems practice on fluid mechanics everyone i expect every one of you to type in the chat box so please type in the chat box correct yes okay so let's go so before that uh, i would like to give because many of you might be seeing me for the first time here so let us uh, let me show you some confidence in me so i was previously working with brc Baba Atomic Research Center before uh, joining the team and previous to that I was working as the officer at HPCL Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited actually there I served for a few time again and again uh, then at that time of when I was working with HPCL I have secured this all India rank of 40 and coming to my teaching X I was teaching for past five plus years initially I was teaching for the JE advanced modules and now uh, I have shifted to gate for five years back okay so when I was working with these two industries I had a lot of uh, you know practical in touch with all the fluid mechanics downward dynamics spin principles lot of equipments like boilers tubes pipelines all these things so definitely we are going to discuss some nice points along this course and of course here we are main focus of this abhyas batch is actually problem solving okay so here you may you, we expect that there is already some basic touch of the concepts to you and at any point if you are not comfortable with the points that we are discussing here definitely we'll spend some time on identifying the theoretical points on that particular problem okay so let us go a quick start and let us start this course with the first example okay so let us try to solve this question So let us try to solve this question. Okay. So let us read this question first. A pressure vessel has an internal volume of 0 0.5 meter cube at atmospheric pressure. So there is a pressure vessel. Normally there is one vessel which has certain volume initially at the atmospheric conditions. Now it is desired to test the vessel at 300 bar by at sorry at 300 bar at 300 bar by pumping water into it. The estimated variation in the change of the empty volume of the container due to pressurization to 300 bar is 6%. Calculate the mass of the water to be pumped into the vessel to attain the desired pressure level. Given the bulk modulus of elasticity of water is 2 into 10 to the power 9 newtons per meter square. Now look, what they are telling you. There is a pressure vessel, first of all. So what happens in a pressure vessel normally, if you take in industries, like example, HPCL, if you take, what happens? There happen certain chemical processes inside the pressure vessels so that this pressure vessel will be subjected to some high pressures. So what they are doing, they are testing this. Normally, this test, which is explained in this question, is called hydro test, which you generally do to check the leaks of the vessels. Okay. Now, if you see, there is a vessel, it has certain volume. So basically, there is a vessel of volume V, Ves volume of the vessel, volume of the vessel is equal to volume of the vessel is equal to how much is the volume they have given you 0 0.5 meter cube 0 0.5 meter cube let us call this v with a cut now initially the pressure outside is atmospheric pressure so p initial or p1 let us say is one atmospheric pressure so let us suppose this is 101.325 kilopascals okay now what they are doing 
they are pumping water into this vessel okay so they are pumping water into this vessel yes it is for civil students also it is helpful for you as well okay so now if you see we are sending water into the pressure vessel and we are trying to maintain the pressure inside the vessel to 300 bar so your point prime focus is to increase the pressure to 300 bar and you know one bar is actually equal to 100 kilopascal so this can be written as 300 into 10 square kilopascals 30,000 basically 30,000 kilopascals okay now if this is the case then what they are doing when this excess water is sent the volume of the vessel is changing by 6% now tell me one thing if volume of the vessel is changing is the volume occupied by water is also changing inside the vessel please type in the chat box if I am telling you the vessel volume is changing then that means the water which is occupying inside the vessel is all the volume of the water which is occupying inside the vessel is also changing correct yes or no so please type in the chat box if vessel is getting deformed slightly by 6% of volume then that extra 6% of the volume is available for the fluid to occupy correct so that means fluid is also occupying some excess volume yes now let us see here pressurization the volume which is the mass of the water to be pumped into the vessel now see here initially let us suppose there is vessel for example pressure vessel like this let us suppose there is some pressure vessel of certain volume so this is a pressure vessel of certain volume now tell me you need to send some water to make it to 300 bar initially this is at one atmospheric pressure now by sending some water you can uh, you know increase the pressure inside the container to 300 bar now tell me initially when i start sending the water initially when i start sending the water will the first water as soon as the first do water droplet enters will the pressure inside the vessel increases tell me as soon as you start sending water into the vessel as soon as you send the first droplet of water or some initial some small mass of water will the start will it start increasing the pressure here yes will it start increasing the pressure no correct because if you see generally initially amount of water which is sent is used to fill the vessel first correct so if you see when you send the water into this first of all at the same one atmosphere pressure water will actually try to fill the container first fill the container then there is excess amount of water which you are sending to increase the pressure actually okay so the total water sent total mass of water total mass of water sent is equal to mass which is sent for filling the vessel mass for filling mass for filling plus mass for pressurization mass for pressurization of the things mass for pressurization now what is the amount of water you need to send inside for filling the vessel this mass for filling is how much mass for filling is equal to normally you know the density of the water is 1000 so this is density into volume of the vessel correct this is the water which you sent actually to fill the vessel so density times volume so this is equal to 10 cube into this volume is 0 0.5 so this is 500 cages so you send some 500 of cages 500 cages of water so this first 500 cages of water which you are sending inside is actually just filling the vessel that's it it's not causing any pressure difference correct now what is the amount of water you send for the pressurization of the uh, container actually so mass for pressurization mass for pressurization pressurization which is delta m let us say for example so this is equal to yes so did you all understand this mass is nothing but density into volume so if you take this differential then the small change in mass is equal to density times change in volume plus volume times change in density can i write this equation can i write this equation yes or no now volume change of the container is known to you dv is given it's basically six percent of the container volume but how you actually calculate the change in density that's the cux here okay so let us see how you actually calculate the change in density you have this bulk modulus so e is equal to dp by d rho by rho is what you have so from this expression you know do is nothing but rho times of dp by Young's mod this bulk modulus okay so this is how you actually calculate the d rho value okay so now if you substitute here this implies delta m is equal to rho times of delta v plus delta v plus v times of 
d rho can be written by this expression rho times uh, rho times dp by this bulk modulus this is the expression so let us substitute the values and let us evaluate what is this delta m okay so let us calculate this delta m value so if you calculate this delta m value let us see what happens fine so let us calculate this delta m value so delta m is equal to density of the fluid which is 10 cube into change in the volume so it's given volume change is 6% delta v is basically 6% so what is the meaning of this delta v is nothing but 0 0.06 times of this v okay so 0 0.06 times of v let us substitute here 0 0.06 times of v which is 0 0.5 plus coming here volume of the vessel 0 0.5 into density into dp density value is 10 cube into dp now everything is in si units so let us write this dp in pascals now tell me pressure dp change in pressure that you applied is p2 minus p1 so p1 is how much p1 is 100 kilo pascals or you can write 10 to the power 5 pascals and p2 is 300 bar means 300 into 10 to the power 5 pascals so 300 minus 1 will always give you almost 299 so anyhow if you replace as 300 directly so 300 into 10 to the power 5 divided by the bulk modulus value 2 into 10 to the power 9 so this is the excess amount of mass which you are sending inside the container for the pressurization of the vessel actually clear so if you see in this case there is two mass two uh, parts of mass which i am sending first part of the mass which is just filling the vessel and second part of the mass which is actually creating the pressure inside the vessel so if you see now we have this mass for filling mass for pressurization so let us calculate this value quickly so if you calculate this value you know uh, this 0 0.5 this 0 0.06 and this 10 cube can cancel and will give you 30 actually and here if you check the calculations then 10 cube 10 power 8 and 1 will cancel this and you have this as 15 times okay so 0 0.5 into 15 7.5 so this is 30 plus 7.5 so total 37.5 kgs of excess water is needed for you for the pressurization process did you all understand the physics that's happening here so basically i am telling you initially when you send some water the first some part of the water will be just used to fill the container and second part of the water what you are sending is actually creating pressure inside the vessel okay so how we have calculated the mass which is causing the pressurization is by this principle of angst mo i mean this bulk modulus okay so therefore total mass total mass required is how much total mass required is mass for filling which is 500 gauges plus mass for pressurization which is 37.5 gauges so total 537.5 gauges is what is the total mass you need to send for the pressurization of the vehicle uh, sorry pressurization of the this uh, vessel actually clear so did you all understand this how we have calculated the mass it's very simple question actually if you see this is just the given data till this particular point now this line is nothing but understanding the physics when you send some water inside first of all that amount of water is used for filling the vessel and second part of the water which you are sending is for creating pressure inside the vessel so mass for filling is very simple density into volume mass for pressurization by some simple this bulk modulus relations we have written and we have calculated it carefully so total 537.5 kgs of water is required to create a pressure of 300 bar inside this 0.5 meter cube volume vessel is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you sir please speak in hindi okay <laughs> fine i will try to speak in hindi very soon okay but not now because uh, right now my hindi is very weak okay if i speak in hindi you feel like shal khan speaking tamil in chennai express movie okay so you don't get much fine okay clear so did you all understand this so basically we are taking about two simple uh, one very common intuition that initial mass is for filling secondary mass is for creating pressurization okay now we have calculated the answers and of course the correct answer is okay 538 is given here so 538 is the correct answer in this case clear so 538 kgs almost uh, if you don't have to nearest integer these are integer values given so 538 kgs of water is actually needed for creating the pressure inside the vehicle uh, inside this uh, vessel okay if i may be right yes of course now let us 
go for the second question so did you like this question many times you might have found this kind of questions but you might have left them unsolved so is this clear now did you all understand this now is it clear to all of you so please type in the chat box did you all like this question shall we go ahead for the second question okay Fine. So let's go for this second question. A piston of 7.95 cm diameter and 30 cm long works in a cylinder of 8 cm diameter. The annular space of the piston is filled with an oil of viscosity 0.2 poise. If an axial load of 10 newtons is applied on the piston, the speed of the movement of the piston is dash. That's what they're asking you. So you have you have a piston, you have a cylinder, you have a cylinder. You have a cylinder, you have a cylinder, so this is the axis of the cylinder for example, so here we have the axis of the cylinder. Now inside the cylinder there is a piston, so if you see there is a piston inside this cylinder, so there is a piston inside this cylinder, okay, so there is some piston inside the cylinder. Now if there is piston inside the cylinder, it's 30 centimeters long so piston length is 30 centimeters long so this length if you call this this length is 30 centimeters let us write so this length is 30 centimeters which means 0.3 meters let us say or you call this l for example for some time uh, it's lagging fine then uh, okay but uh, right now we'll uh, cover this uh, abhyas batch in English, but we'll also try to use some Hindi in between. Okay, so it's lagging, sir. Oh, it's lagging. Oh, buffering symbol. But I hope in my system it's going fine. I hope there is no issue. Right? Is it going fine now? Maybe some lag in between. One, two seconds. But I hope it's fine now. Correct. So please type in the chat box. Is this fine now? Please once confirm in the chat box. All of you, everyone should confirm in the chat box. Okay. Fine. So let us see here. Okay. Yes, it's okay, sir. Good. So now if you see, let us suppose in this piston, you have applied some force F, some axial force you have applied axial force you have applied and this space is filled with oil of some dynamic viscosity. This space is filled with some oil of dynamic viscosity like this. Okay. So this space is actually filled with some oil of dynamic viscosity. Now, whenever this is filled with dynamic viscosity, so whenever you apply certain force on this piston to move it rightwards, this viscous oil which is surrounding this shaft or you can say piston basically, the viscous oil which is surrounding this piston will try to pull this piston back, correct? Okay? Because if you see, there is some viscous resistance offered by the oil on this piston. So now let us see how to do now, okay? So let us see here, it's filled with an oil of viscosity mu. If an axial load of 10 newtons is applied on the piston, the speed of the movement of the piston is look let us suppose if this piston is moving at a velocity v for example if this piston is moving at a velocity v for example now if i take small portion here if i take some small portion here if i take some small portion here and let us suppose i am highlighting it okay and i am highlighting it for example means this is the base of the piston then this is the wall of the cylinder this is the wall of the cylinder. I am just exaggerating the small gap between them. Okay. So now tell me one thing. If this is, you know, uh, fixed like this, if this is moving with a velocity V, there is some viscous oil in between this fluid. There is some viscous oil in between this piston and this cylinder. Now tell me, will there be a velocity gradient which is set up here? Yes or no? Please tell me. Will there be a velocity gradient which is set up here? inside this tell me yes correct because if you see because of no slip condition the fluid layer which is in contact with the wall of the cylinder will remain stationary and the the piston will actually try to move with a velocity v correct now let us substitute the things okay so if you see 
there is certain velocity gradient that is developed across any section okay so here the velocity is zero but by the time it comes here there is a velocity of the piston actually here okay so there is some velocity of the piston so if you see there is some velocity gradient which is set up here so let us suppose this clearance value is c this clearance value is c so if you want to calculate under equilibrium so what's happening this block is moving with uniform velocity so whenever this block is moving with uniform velocity definitely the net force acting on the block will be zero correct net force acting on the piston will be zero obviously because it is moving at some uniform velocity because sigma f x let us suppose if i call this direction as x direction sigma f x is zero because the block is moving with uniform velocity which means the axial load which you have applied should be equal to the shear load so what is the shear load that is acting on this block actually means due to the viscous viscosity you know viscous force is nothing but viscous shear stress into area so what is this area pi d is the diameter of this piston and length l is the total area of contact between the fluid and the solid yes or no what is the total area of contact between the fluid and the solid this piston is surrounded by fluid so pi d is the circumference multiplied by length so this total surface area lateral surface area of the piston is in contact with the fluid so the contact area is pi d into l is what you have okay so this is pi d into l so what we shall write for this mu tau tau can be written from newton's law of viscosity mu into du by dy so here the velocity is zero here the velocity is piston velocity v and this is happening in a space of c if you assume linear profile for very small gap you have this v by c so this is mu into v by c is the shear stress acting at this at any location and pi d into l is the total surface area which is in touch with the piston okay so if you simplify this expression f is equal to mu v into pi d l by clearance okay now mu value is given directly 0.2 poise v value is also given it the piston okay v we need to calculate okay so pi value is constant d diameter of the piston we have clearance and all is given so 30 centimeters long length is given the force applied is also given so what is the expression for this v here f into clearance divided by f into clearance divided by mu pi d l this is the expression for the velocity in this case correct so it's very simple total shear stress acting is equal to shear uh, newton's law by newton's law of viscosity you have mu into velocity gradient into pi d into l now if you put the values let us see what are the values you have mu mu is how much what is the value of mu 0.2 poise so 0.2 poise you need to check for the units carefully and you know one poise is basically equal to 10 to the power minus 1 newton second per meter square pascal second next so f what is f value 10 newtons f value is 10 newtons now then after f is there f is there mu is there dl diameter of the piston is how much 7.95 centimeters so diameter d is equal to 7.95 centimeters which is 10 power minus 2 meters what about the length of the piston it's given piston is of 30 centimeters length so 0 0.3 meters and finally we need to talk about the clearance now tell me one thing this c is nothing but a radial clearance correct because if you see the total this cylinder diameter is 8 centimeters 7.95 centimeters is the piston diameter so if you sum up these two values you actually will get the clearance so 8 minus 7.95 but this c what you are taking is only half of the total clearance so it is radial clearance so c is equal to diameter of this uh, sleeve what, what is this diameter of the cylinder right they have talked about cylinder so diameter of cylinder minus diameter of piston divided by 2 so this is 8 centimeters minus 7.95 centimeters so 0 0.05 by 2 this is in centimeters so 10 to the power minus 2 meters let us substitute these values and get the expression for value of v v is equal to f into c f into c c is 0 0.05 means 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 totally by 2 is what you have f c divided by f into c divided by mu into mu is how much 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 into pi mu into pi into d into l so d is 7.95 into 10 to the power minus 2 into l l is how much 3 meter point 3 meters so 3 into 10 to the power minus 1 so if you simplify you will get the answer for this easily 1.668 is coming 1.668 is it let me check 
let me check the values so 10 to the power minus 2 10 to the power minus 2 this 10 to the power minus 4 gets cancelled then this 2 can cancel this 10 5 times so that's it we have made all the possible calculations okay so if you see this is 25 by 2 into pi into 7.95 into 3 into this 10 power minus 1 if it goes on to the top it is 10 okay so let us check this value and uh, see 25 into 10 25 into 10 25 into 10 divided by divided by 2 into 2 into 7.95 7.95 into 3 into pi so if you simplify this you'll got 1.6682 1.6682 8 meters per second correct okay? because this is in si units is it 1.668 meters per second clear so please type in the chat box yes very good rohit abhimanyu pavan Dvi sorry if i'm pronounce it wrong dvivedi okay so pavan uh, okay i hope you are fine with calling pavan so pavan rohit Abhimanyu, all of you. So I hope this is the correct answer. 1.668 meters per second. Okay, so 1.668 uh, meters per second is the velocity here. Okay, it's given 16.34. So calculations are correct, right? We have made the calculations correct. Is it? So please type in the chat box. It is correct. Yes. How you take clearance? Because clearance is look. Let me tell you. Let us suppose. If my hand is the piston, okay, and let us suppose if this is the cylinder, then the difference in between these two gives the total clearance. Means if you see between these two, there is a circumference, and the total clearance is diameter of the cylinder minus diameter of the piston. Actually, here clear diameter of the cylinder minus diameter of the piston. Okay, so whenever you have this. The clearance value, this C, is actually the radial clearance here. So, this is half of this value. Okay. So, clearance, what we have, is actually half of this value. Half of this difference in the diameters. Because some half of the clearance is on this side and half of the clearance is on this side. Clear? Okay, uh, Vikas, fine then. So it's anyhow one point the decimal should be here 1.64 to 1.701 okay 1.701 to 1.634 okay maybe the DTP has you know got some decimal mistake but 1.668 is the correct answer here in this case okay and I hope all of you got 1.668 good okay so that's the correct answer let's go for the next question MCQ now if a droplet bubble jet of same radius r of same fluid is considered in air then the correct ascending order ascending order means you know smaller to largest ascending means lower to higher values lower to higher if a droplet bubble jet of same radius capital R of same fluid is considered in air then the correct ascending order of the fluid bodies with respect to the pressure difference inside them and air so what is the correct answer b oh very fast copying shouldn't copy okay so now anyhow good so look here there are three fluid bodies droplet bubble and also z correct so when you have these three fluid bodies normally you know if you take any fluid body for example if you take any fluid body if you take any fluid body in general there is some internal pressure which is excess than this outer pressure which we know from this young laplace equation correct there is something called young laplace equation that if any fluid body for any fluid body for any fluid body this pressure in minus pressure out this pressure difference is given by n times of sigma into two radius of curvatures 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 these two are in perpendicular directions normally so this is the Young Laplace equation to identify the pressure difference between any two bodies. Okay, so now if you check this, this n is the number of active surfaces, means basically number of interfaces between the two fluids. Okay, for example, if you take a droplet, okay, if you take a drop, 
inside the circumference also at every location there is liquid there is no more interface of liquid and gas and but fire drop if you see on the outer surface yes outer surface is fluid then above the outer surface you have air again so there is one interface but in case of bubbles what happen bubble have air filled inside also so there is one interface inside the circumference and there is one interface outside so in case of bubbles you have two active interfaces in case of droplet you have only one active interface okay so that's why this n is number of interfaces interfaces and this r1 and r2 are the radius of curvatures here okay so now if you simplify the things if you take bubble for example if you take bubble so delta p of bubble is equal to delta p of bubble or droplet let us say let us start with droplet so droplet is equal to droplet has only one active surface sigma between water and air interface in case of a droplet you take radius in any two perpendicular directions both are equal to radius of the bubble i mean radius of the droplet so this is equal to 2 sigma by r which is okay 2 sigma by r let us leave it here now if you take a bubble delta p generated inside the bubble is equal to in case of bubble you have two active surfaces so 2 times sigma into 1 by r plus again 1 by r because bubble also have radius in two directions into normal directions if you take you have the same radius so this is equal to 4 times of sigma by radius now if you take the jet delta p of jet jet also has only one active surface because inside the jet again there is fluid so 1 into sigma into now if you take a jet if you take a jet let us suppose if this is the axis of the jet then if here you have the radius r and in this direction if you measure the radius can you tell me what is the radius of the jet along the length of the jet can you touch the ending point of the jet means basically if you see if let us suppose if there is a jet like this then you know what is the radius of the jet in this direction so in a normal direction if you try to take the radius of curvature will smaller will be very small or very large value infinity correct so this smaller value is r if r1 is equal to r then r2 tends to infinity this is what you have so 1 by r plus 1 by infinity so this is what you have so total you have sigma by radius so if you see sigma by r is common in every term but in case of droplet you have two sigma in case of bubble you have four sigma in case of jet you have only one sigma so what is the ascending order one two four which means jet droplet bubble is the ascending order so jet droplet bubble is actually present here so that's why this jet uh, pressure defense created in the jet is less than pressure jet defense created in the droplet which is less than pressure defense created in the bubble clear okay so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you yes many of you have answered b neeraj abhimanyu gk pavan vikas rohit tarni good so all of you have answered it correct it's actually b this is jet droplet and bubble and this equation which i am talking here is called this ng laplace equation okay in in courses we are deriving this but right now this is just a problem solving session we are just giving the equation okay good let's go for the next question so sorry fourth question nat a shaft with a diameter d is equal to 80 mm so there is a shaft which is given and this diameter of the shaft is 80 mm okay so let us suppose if diameter is somewhere here so let us suppose this distance from the axis this distance from the axis is 40 mm okay we have done only one side of the values okay so this is 40 mm so this is 80 mm is the total diameter of the shaft and the length of 200 mm so you have certain length also so there is also some length for this shaft length now as shown in the figure is pulled with a constant velocity of u is equal to 4 meters per second to a bearing with variable diameter okay so see here let me draw the things here so that it will be clear let us suppose you have a shaft like this for example you have a shaft like this then you have a bearing like this some variable diameter bearing so you have some variable diameter bearing fine so if you see this bearing is of some variable uh, diameter something like this okay so you have certain variable diameter bearing now this length of the shaft is given length of the shaft is given l let us say let us say this is l 
and let us suppose this diameter of the shaft is a d for example okay so let us use some different color for dimensions so let us see this is length l and this is your diameter of the shaft now it's given this clearance value is h1 and this clearance value is h2 this clearance value is h2 so basically clearance is decreasing as you are going along the length direction okay now what they are asking let us see this is pulled with a constant velocity of u is equal to 4 meters per second so this is pulled with some velocity so if you see there is some velocity with which this shaft is pulled with some force f so that this is moving at u meters per second okay with this is moving in this direction at u meters per second now let us see what they are asking the clearance between the shaft and the bearing which varies from h1 1.6 mm to h2 0.4 mm is filled with a newtonian lubricant with whose dynamic viscosity is 0.1 pascal second okay so this space means basically if you see this space which is here this space is actually filled with some dynamic viscous oil newtonian viscous oil so there is some viscosity which is present here okay so there is some viscous oil which is present here in this case there is some viscous oil which is present here just i'm filling the viscous oil okay so there is some viscous oil which is present here now if this is viscous oil the axial force required to maintain the axial movement of the shaft is dash so they are asking you obviously if you want to pull this shaft you need to apply certain force so they are asking you what is the magnitude of that force f okay so let us see 72.6 you are getting okay let us uh, check what is the value now try to understand one thing first of all i will ask you one question please tell me are the is the distance from the fixed surface to the point of contact means if you see these are points of contacts these points are the point of contact of the fluid with the solid correct so if you see this shaft is filled so these are the point of contacts now tell me is point of contacts at equal distance from the fixed from the fixer means if you see if this is a stationary line are these point of contacts at equal thickness from the clearance tell me if you have this bearing are these points which are on the shaft which are at the fluid solid interface are they at equal distance from this bearing along the length no correct they are not at equal length means basically here the length is something different here the length is something different here it is something different but at all these points the velocity of the flow is same correct because whenever it is a shaft integration karna padega yeah definitely we have to do integration so because if you see this at every location particles moves with v velocity u capital u meters per second but the clearance is something different at each location okay so what we will do we will take a small section let us try to see how it works out okay so let us suppose i have taken some small section of the shaft like this let us suppose i have taken some small section of the shaft like this okay so let us suppose if i define a coordinate system if i define a coordinate system from this location so let us suppose this is the location of x is equal to 0 this is the location of x is equal to l for example because it's totally of length l now if i take this small section let us see what is the force you need to pull the small section so df elemental force for pulling for pulling the small section is equal to shear stress acting on that small section into area now tell me if this thickness is dx if this length is dx if this length is dx now at this point the diameter of the shaft is d at this location the diameter of the shaft is d because shaft is of uniform diameter so tell me what could be the area of contact between this shaft and the oil in this small section of dx tell me if i take the small section of length dx then tell me what is the contact area between the fluid and the solid type in the chat box come on what is the small area of contact between the solid and the uh, you know viscous oil circumference multiplied by this distance correct so pi into d which is the circumference of that shaft i multiplied by this small thickness dx yes so please tell me is this cut is this cut so pi d multiplied with dx is the small yes pi d into dx correct so if you see pi d into dx so what is tau 
tau is nothing but mu into velocity gradient so at this section at this section here the velocity is zero here the velocity is capital u so velocity gradient is v minus zero by this height at this section clearance at this section is let us say hx for example divided by hx is the clearance hx is some function which is changing so hx times pi d dx now let us suppose if you are capable of writing this hx in terms of h h1 h2 x and all these things we can do the integration so what is hx look try to understand one thing try to understand one thing this is shaft this is clear this is the bearing okay this is the bearing actually it's okay so is this is the bearing now tell me one thing let us suppose if i start x is equal to 0 for example here x is equal to l here and this is some location where x is equal to x for example lay okay so at some location x is equal to x yeah good one okay so now x is equal to x now tell me from this point if i take this as the fn's axis for example this point is at a height of h1 correct this point is at a height of h1 this point is at a height of h2 h2 this point is at a height of h so if you see can i write the coordinates as 0 comma h1 x comma h l comma h2 can i write the coordinates of this line like this can i write the three points here with this coordinates 0 comma h1 x comma h and this yes or no so please type in the chat box this point is at a height of h1 this point is at a height of h2 and this point is at a height of some intermediate height h so tell me can i write the three points as 0 comma h1 x comma h l comma h2 yes can i write this now when i take these two then definitely if i take the slope between these two points or if i take the slope between initial and final points slope should be same because it's a straight line equation correct so which means from this you can write h1 minus h2 by 0 minus l because y2 minus y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 okay if you write h2 minus h1 that's also fine so h2 minus h1 by l minus 0 this is same as h minus h1 divided by x minus 0 correct because this value is nothing but the slope between these two points this value is nothing but the slope between these two points okay so slopes of a straight line is same between any two points so that's why these two are equal so from this if you see h is equal to h1 minus h1 minus h2 or h1 plus you can say h1 plus because if you simplify h1 h is equal to h1 plus h2 minus h1 by l into x this is what you have here okay so h1 plus h2 minus h1 by l into x is what you will get from this equation if you write the expression for x now h1 is some constant value h2 is some constant value length of the shaft is also one constant value so which means i can take this value as some constant k let us suppose so this implies depth at this section is equal to h1 plus k times of x correct i can write this h1 plus k times of x okay test says very soon we are launching because it's already in the scheduling okay so scheduling is going on and very soon you will get the launch of the test says clear we, it's already in track everything is uh, you know in line for the test says okay so now let us focus here so did you all understand because once i replace this then completely it's mathematical doing integration and all it's mathematical but first of all did you all understand how i identified the clearance at any given location x please type in the chat box did you all understand how did i maintain the clearance like this how did i get the value of the clearance like this yes so please type in the chat box slopes should be same so that's why this is the clearance value okay so if this is the clearance value now let us see here this implies your df is equal to mu v pi d into 1 by hx into dx which hx is actually 1 by hx can be written as h1 plus kx into dx correct yes or no so please tell me we can write this so now this is the small elemental force which is required to pull this small section now if you want the total force which is required to pull this complete shaft then this implies this implies total force required total force required is equal to just integrate this expression from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l so if you integrate pi mu vd these are constants 
इंटीग्रल एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू एल वन बाय एच वन प्लस के एक्स डी एक्स ओके सो दिस इंप्लाइज योर एफ इज इक्वल टू इफ यू डू द इंटीग्रेशन पाई म्यू वी डी इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ दिस एच वन प्लस के एक्स इज लॉन एच वन प्लस के एक्स लॉन एच वन प्लस के एक्स Divided by k, that k is a constant. So let us suppose I am writing the k here, for example. Okay. So this within the limits x is equal to zero to x is equal to l actually. Okay. So this implies your f is equal to pi mu v d by k multiplied with when you substitute l h one plus k l minus ln h one because when you put zero it is ln h one. So this gives you ln a minus ln b form which I can write as ln A plus sorry, ln A minus ln B form, which I let as ln A by B. So ln H one plus K one times of L divided by H one plus K times of zero. K times of zero. This is what we have actually. Okay. So what is H one plus K L? Let us suppose if you replace L here, for example, in place of X, if you put L, L L gets cancelled. H one H one gets cancelled. So this value is H two. This value is H one. Okay. So yeah, finally the expression that you will get is. Pi mu v d l by h1 minus h2 times ln h1 by h2. This is the total force which you need to pull this shaft in this tapered clearance. Okay, so pi mu v d l. It's mathematical. Here, just completely, these two three steps are mathematical. But I am telling you, when you do the integration, this is the expression for which you will actually. Get if you simplify the result. H k is equal to k is nothing but h two minus h one by l. So using that minus sign, if you shift these two terms, because generally h one is bigger than h two, so if you shift, this is the expression that you actually get here. Okay. So now if you see, let us go back and substitute here. F is equal to f is equal to pi mu v d l by h one minus h two times ln h one by h two is the Value. It's very simple question. Actually, it's not a very tough question. Only thing is slight involvement of mathematical integration. That's it. Okay, because the points of contact between solid and fluid are not at equal distance from the uh, you know fixed uh, bearing. Actually, okay. So from this line, they are not at the fixed distance. So that's why we need to go for the integration because this clearance is not a constant value. It's actually changing along the length. Okay. So if you do this integration, just a second. So let me take one slide here. Fine. So if you substitute the values, f is equal to pi mu. What is mu value given in the question? Mu is how much? Point one pi pascal second. Okay, in the same as they have given directly point one. So which means ten to the power minus one pi mu u d l. So u is how much? Four meters per second. U is four meters per second. D l. So what is the diameter of the shaft? Shaft diameter is eighty mm. And length is 200 mm. So if you convert it into meters, 80 into 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 in meter square. If you convert pi mu v d l by h1 minus h2 by h1 minus h2. So what is h1 minus h2? H1 is 1.6. H2 is 0.4. So 1.2 mm. So 1.2 mm means 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters into ln. H1 by H2, 1.6 divided by 0.4, which is ln 4. Okay, so ln 4. These many newtons. Okay, so let us simplify the result. If you simplify, what comes here? This four zeros, this two zeros will cancel this 10 to the power minus 6. This four will cancel this three times. Okay, so this 10 to the power minus 1 and this zero gets cancelled. So if you see total, 2 eight jar 16 pi by 3 into ln 4 is the Total value in newtons. Okay, so let us calculate the. Let us calculate this using a calculator. To read the question so that we can try. Okay, yeah, definitely I will try to give some time for you to solve. Okay, so let us calculate this value. Sixteen pi by three. Sixteen pi by three multiplied with ln four. So ln four is this value. Twenty three point double two seven. Twenty three point two two seven. Newtons. Okay, so twenty three point double two seven newtons is what you have actually. Okay, so let us check for the units. Are they asking the value in newtons? So if you see, they are asking the value in newtons for the moment of the shaft in newtons. So twenty three point we got twenty three point double two. So if you see, twenty three point double two is within this range. Okay, so round off to two decimal places. So twenty three point two three you can write. 
yeah 23.216 maybe i have considered till the last decimal values so there is some uh, change in the second or third decimals but this is how we can get the values clear i am solving this with the help of the get calculator so that you will also do the calculations along with me okay 23.27 so is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box is this clear it's very simple question actually but the only thing is this clearance is not constant so because of which we need to go for a integration okay so if you want to go for integration you need to know what is this value so this part which i have told here is in order to calculate this h in terms of this x and once you get this hx means basically if you see this is hx hx at this section x basically that's it okay so hx so we'll get this integration okay amazing question right it's a very good question okay because normally clearances are not at some finite uh, fixed distance at each point of contact so that's why we need to go for integrations okay next so solve this work done in splitting a single droplet of diameter 4 cm into 64 droplets in atmosphere is k into 10 to the power minus 4 joules the value of k is dash around of to three decimal places then they have given you some data assume the surface tension between a and water interface is something now tell me one thing if you want to create a free surface if you want to create a free surface of liquid do you have to do some work tell me if you want to create a free surface of fluid then do you want to uh, you, you know do you have to do any work so please type in the chat box if there is a new surface which you have to create then for creating the surface do you have to do some work yes we have to do correct that's why many of you might have done this actually if you take a soap film in your hand and if you blow it you will get some bubble you will create a surface but you are actually doing some work on the soap film correct similarly if you see normally if you want to create surfaces you actually need to do some work actually okay and that work what you are doing to create the surface is actually stored as surface energy if uh, in crash course and all of course crash course i think it will start soon but then uh, uh, hopefully amit dikshit sir will actually give you the idea so if you see this surface energy is that energy which is stored in fluid bodies by virtue of they are at the surface okay so if you see what is surface energy what is the work you need to do okay so work done in creating a surface work done in creating a surface work done in creating a surface is equal to sigma into delta a where delta a is the amount of area which is created actually okay so this work done in creating a surface is equal to sigma times of delta a so sigma is basically the surface tension at the water a interface of course this is told in atmosphere so that water a interface into the amount of surface area which is generated now tell me this question let us suppose if there is a droplet if i split this big droplet into some small droplets when i split this big droplet into small droplets will there be any increase in the surface area will there be any increase in the surface area yes 10.98 is the answer okay good we'll we'll go in a step by step okay because there are some friends which to whom we need to make it clear so see here whenever you are creating a big droplet to small droplets will there be any increase in the surface area of the bubbles means other drops actually yes correct so if you see if you do some simple analysis you will come to know total mass of droplet is equal to means mass of the droplet should be equal to mass of small droplets mass of small droplets of course all together okay so if you see this is density of water into you know for the radius is given or diameters are given diameters are given okay so let us see pi d cube by 6 is the diameter so this should be same as density of the water into let us suppose n small droplets you have formed so pi d cube by 6 so pi by 6 and pi by 6 gets cancelled density of water and density of water gets cancelled so the small diameter is equal to capital d into n to the power 1 by 3 so this is going to be the small d is equal to sorry divided by n okay so capital d divided by n power 1 by 3 capital d divided by n to the power 1 by 3 okay so this is the relation between the small diameter and the big diameter of the water droplet which is formed now if this is the case let us calculate area what is the surface area in case so delta a is equal to n times of normally what is the surface area of a sphere droplet basically 4 pi r square which is nothing but pi d square so pi d square 
minus the area of the big droplet is pi d square. So if you see, this are uh, the total surface area difference that is created. Okay, so n into pi d square, pi d square. D square is nothing but d square by n to the power two by three minus pi times of d square. So if you simplify, we have pi d square times of n to the power one by three minus one. So this is the total generation of the new surface area because n power two by three cancel this n power one by three times pi d square is common in both the terms. So this is how we have the things. Now what is the work done formula? Work done is equal to sigma into delta a because this work done is nothing but amount of surface energy that is stored by these particles. Okay, so this is sigma. So what is sigma they have given you? Okay, so let us substitute the value. Sigma is how much? The assume the surface tension between air water interface as 0 0.07286. So 0 0.07286 Newton per meter. Okay, 0 0.07286. Now tell me one thing. I'll ask you one question before doing the calculation and all. Surface tension is property of the fluid or is it binary property? Tell me. Surface tension. Look, for example, if you take viscosity, density, specific gravity, all these are basically properties of the fluids. If you take surface tension, please tell me, surface tension is property of the fluid itself or is it binary property? It is binary property. Correct? Very good. Because if you see, surface tension is because of imbalance due to adhesion and cohesion forces. Correct? If you see, whenever there is certain medium above the fluid, then this surface tension at this interface is depending on the fluid which is actually at the interface okay so that's why it is binary property actually the, if you see the surface tension between mercury and this uh, water will be something different from mercury and some other oil maybe instead of water okay so it depends on the fluids which are meeting at the interface okay if you take some look let me tell this question if you take some location which is deep inside a single fluid will there be any surface tension if you take a point uh, if you take a location in a deep inside a fluid then will there be any surface tension at that point no correct because surface tension is always due to uh, uh, you know in the two fluids which are at the interface and this is one very very important question you should never write surface tension of water surface tension of kerosene something like this okay so you should always write this surface tension of air water interface but normally sometimes what happens you assume the fluid to be air so generally in some books you find this surface tension of water is point something point not seven to eight this is what they write there when they are writing that line their assumption is the next interface is air by default okay so is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you Okay, so if this is clear, then let us go for these questions. Point not seven two eight six pi d square. What is the diameter of this bubble? Uh, I mean, sorry, the droplet which is splitted four centimeters. So four into ten to the power minus two zero point zero four. Let us write into square. Okay, so square of this guy into n power one by three. So what is the total number of uh, total number of droplets to which you have split? Uh, sixty four droplets you have split it. Okay, so sixty four power one by three minus 1. So this is the value which you need to calculate. So this answer, everything is in SI units. So you'll get the answer in joules. Okay. So let us calculate this value using a virtual calculator. 0 0.07286, 0 0.07286 into 0 0.07286 into pi into 0 0.04 whole square into 0 0.04 square. This value multiplied with 64 power 1 by 3 is nothing but 4. So 4 minus 1, it is 3. So multiplied with so if you see 0 0.001098 0 0.001098 joules okay now they are asking this value in what k into 10 to the power minus 4 joules okay so if you take 10 to the power minus 4 conversion here 10.98 into 10 to the power minus 4 joules okay so k value is nothing but this value which is here which is 10.98 like this Okay, so 10.98 is the value of the K, which is given in this question. So 10.98. So how many decimals they are asking? Three decimals. Okay, so we need one more decimal. After eight, there is seven. So 987. 10.987 is what you can write. Okay. So this is clear question, right? 10.98. Many of you told, uh, correct? I'm happy, but the main important point here is you should definitely understand that surface tension is always a binary property of the fluid. Clear? 
next let us go for the next and of course the range is 10.724 to 11.182 which is within the range okay so uh, this 10.987 is actually within this range so there is no issue clear let us go for the next question so let us try to solve this question a cylindrical body 90 mm in diameter and 500 mm long and of weight 15 newtons slides vertically in a 92 mm cylindrical sleeve due to its own weight the space between the body and the sleeve is filled with oil the dynamic viscosity of the oil needed to restrict the terminal velocity of the fall of the cylindrical body to 5 cm per second is dash pa is dash pascal second this is one really beautiful question because look i'll ask you one thing look normally let us suppose if you take a body <coughs> If you take a body, for example, let us suppose you have taken some body and left it to gravity. Let us suppose I have taken some body and I left it. Now tell me one thing. Will this body keep on accelerating if I leave? Yes or no? If I take this body, for example, for example, if I take this body and let us suppose if I drop it, of course I won't drop, don't worry. But let us suppose if I drop this, then will this body keep on going at some acceleration? Will this body attain some uniform velocity or will this body continue to accelerate? Tell me. If I leave this body like this, for example, if I leave this body like this, will this body continues to accelerate or it will go to some terminal velocity? It will keep on accelerating, correct? It will keep on accelerating, okay? So that's why if you see, if you see carefully, but in this case, whenever there is certain fluid column, means if you take there is a vertical gap like this, If there is some vertical gap like this, if there is some vertical gap like this, now when you leave this body, this body will initially accelerate. Of course, if you see, whenever you leave this body, starting from rest, the body will accelerate for some time. But after some time, this acceleration on this body will be zero actually. Clear? Look, I am repeating. If you see this block, if you leave it, then what happens? This body will come down slowly. Means, of course, the block initially accelerates for some time. But after some time, the block will come to a uniform velocity. It won't accelerate to any further value. Okay. So, let us see how we will take this. So, can you take impulse momentum and angular momentum equations in single shot? Yes, of course. Very soon. Uh, but before definitely get examination, I will uh, take this, uh, you know, linear equation and uh, Sorry, this momentum equation and angular momentum equations. Okay, don't worry. I will definitely take it out. Okay, Vijay Sai. Now, let us see here. When this is fixed, look, shall we spend some five times on understanding why we actually have some uniform velocity? Let us suppose, even in this case also, gravity will be acting. So, this body has a chance of accelerating continuously. But after some time, this body will attain some terminal velocity and it tries to, it continues to move at that terminal velocity. Shall we spend some 5 minutes in physically understanding why this block is coming to a terminal velocity? Shall we spend some time? Okay. So, type in the chat box. Shall we spend some time in this? On understanding why this block is actually coming to a terminal velocity? Yes. Okay, so let us try to understand here carefully. Now, let us suppose if there is some viscous oil, if there is some viscous oil, it's a cubical block, something I think they have given, cubical block or something, a cylindrical body, okay, cylindrical body basically, fine, anyhow, let us see, there is some contact area A on both sides, for example, okay, so let us suppose if this is a cylindrical block of area A, cylindrical block of area A, for example, okay, of this surface area A. Okay, so let us say diameter is D, diameter is D, length is L, length is L. Did they give mass or something? Weight 15 newtons. Okay, directly they have given weight, no issue. So L is there. Okay, now here if you see there is some viscous oil which is present. Viscous oil. Now let us suppose this clearance value is C. This clearance value which is here is C. This clearance value is C. Now, this clearance value is C. Now, let us suppose at initially at time t is equal to 0, at time t is equal to 0, the velocity of the block is also 0. It, it is starting from rest. Now, at time t equal to 0, the velocity of the block is 0, it is released. Now, let us see at some time, at any instant t, if you draw the free body diagram of the block, if you draw the free body diagram of the block, 
there is some viscous action all over the circumference of this block yes or no so if you see there is some viscous force which tries to oppose the block all over the surface there is this viscous force which acts all over the circumference of the block to oppose this motion okay now at the same time there is some weight which is also acting bottom some weight which is acting at the bottom towards bottom this is weight this is viscous force f viscous so these are the two forces which are acting on this block at any given instant of time weight will try to act downwards and viscous effect will try to stop the block means it viscous effects will be in the opposite direction of the block okay now let us try to understand at any instant at any instant since the block is moving in the bottom direction since the block is moving in the bottom direction can i write sigma fy is equal to mass into acceleration in the y direction can i write this because block is actually moving with some acceleration initially at some time let us suppose as soon as the motion got started sigma fy is equal to mass into acceleration in the y direction now let us assume this weights in the downward direction means forces in the downward direction are positive because acceleration of the block is in the downward direction okay so if acceleration of the block is in the downward direction let us consider the forces in the downward direction as positive for some time okay so this implies w minus viscous force is equal to mass which is nothing but w by g into acceleration in the y direction okay so what is acceleration in the y direction dv by dt is the acceleration in the y direction okay so what is viscous force we need to get an expression for the viscous force viscous force acting on the block is equal to this clearance is c so clearance value is c so tau into area the area in contact with the block is pi dl is the total area which is in contact with the viscous oil so tau can be written from newton's law of viscosity that mu into now if i enlarge this portion for example you will get a diagram like this there is a surface which is moving at v velocity meters per second there is a surface which is stationary so if you take a velocity gradient in this direction opposite i mean perpendicular to this motion you will develop a velocity gradient like this so this is v so slowly there comes some velocity gradient and this clearance is c so normal direction to the motion you have a velocity gradient v by c v by c is the clearance into pi dl so if you see this equation we have w minus w minus mu v pi dl by c or pi mu d l by c into v let us suppose this is equal to w by g times dv by dt so can i say this is the differential equation at any given time at any given time if i want to understand the motion of this pitch of this cylinder which is inside can i say that this is the differential equation which governs the motion of this piston of this uh, cylinder actually so please type in the chat box can i say that this piston cylinder means basically this cylinder is actually coming down and this is the equation of motion for the movement of this cylinder yes or no yes i can tell this okay so let us do the integration now let us suppose if this is some constant a this is some constant a for example small a kind of thing because every term is constant pi is constant mu is constant d is constant l clearance all these are constants okay so what you have actually w minus av is equal to dv by is equal to w by g times dv by dt so if you simplify this relation g by w times dt is equal to g by w times dt is equal to 1 by w minus av times this dv is what you have now if you do the integration initially when time t is equal to 0 velocity v is also 0 when time t is equal to t after starting of motion this velocity has got to a value of v for example okay so this implies if you do the integration g by w times t is equal to integration of this quantity is ln w minus av divided by minus a is what you have within the limits 0 to small v okay so if you simplify this equation let us i am trying to generate an expression for velocity v okay so this implies this g by w t g by w t 
is equal to or minus a if you see this minus a can be multiplied to the other side so minus a g by w t is equal to ln when you put v here w minus a v when you put 0 here this is w so if you see we can write one equation 1 minus a v by w is equal to e power minus a g by w times of time here okay so if you write the expression for velocity the final expression for velocity is something like this look the final oh i'm sorry look here fine so the final expression for velocity is something like something happened v is equal to v is equal to look if you write the expression for v from this equation you will get a v by w is here 1 minus 1 minus e power minus g a by w g or a by w times of t multiplied with multiplied with multiplied with w by a correct because if you see 1 minus this term is equal to a v by w so w by a comes into the multiplication w by a it comes into the multiplication now tell me this is the final expression for the velocity now tell me one thing this function is an exponential function correct and you can observe one thing this w is positive small a is also positive because in small a all these quantities are positive so if you see this is positive so this complete expression is positive time is there there is a minus sign so tell me with respect to time what happens to the velocity value with respect to time what happens to the velocity value this function will have a maximum at, at, at one point means basically if you see with respect to time this value will keep on decreasing yes or no try to understand this as time increases this value will try to keep on decrease yes this value keeps on decreasing actually correct so if you see at some time at after some time after some finite time means let us suppose if time tends to infinity so infinity is basically not even big because if you see e power x minus x function i will tell you i will show you one good graph here actually okay so desmos is one plotter which we plot math you know graphs in maths so if you see e power e power minus x so if you see this graph of e power minus x this is the graph of e power minus x you see let us suppose if this is time t equal to zero by the time t is reaching t is reaching almost 4 seconds 4.5 seconds after motion if you take this value of y for example 0 0.0113 understood means as soon as the motion starts within next 3 4 seconds this value of exponential term will come to zero so which means the involvement of this t term the involvement of this exponential will come to zero after some 3 to 4 seconds of starting of the motion directly understood so that's why after some time you don't have the effect of this so this turns out to be zero so since these two are constants that v will try to maintain a constant value so physically what is happening here as your v is increasing look as the body is coming down when v is increasing there is one quantity which is increasing which is this viscous force because you see this viscous force has a multiplication of some constant into velocity so when velocity is increasing this viscous force is increasing but this w is constant okay so that's why when block is sliding the viscous force on the block will actually increase okay so the viscous force on the block will increase and that's why the difference between these two will start falling down okay because w is constant the viscous force is keep on increasing so there comes a point where the effect due to these two will cancel out and this dv by dt term will be zero which means v will remain constant with respect to time is this clear to all of you is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you did you all understand physically what is happening of course mathematically we have seen that because of that exponential involvement after some finite time within four to five seconds the e power minus function is actually getting to be zero and you have a constant velocity so once you have this constant velocity but physically what is happening this viscous force is keep on increasing because of the increase in this velocity v so as velocity v increases your viscous effect is actually increasing continuously weight is remaining constant but viscous effect is increasing so the difference between these two will come to a small value and finally this gets neglected so then at that moment this acceleration will be zero clear now let us see what is the terminal velocity so at after some time t tends to infinity v terminal v terminal is equal to 
when you put t tends to infinity this term goes to zero so w by small a this is the value of the terminal velocity so what is the small a value w by what are the terms we have taken for this constant a pi mu d l by c so pi mu d l by c which means this is v terminal is equal to v terminal is equal to w into c by pi mu d l now i hope you have all the four values okay so let us calculate the value expression so this is the formula this how we got this from this simple analysis okay so this implies v terminal is equal to let us see the values v terminal is equal to v terminal is equal to w so what is w weight of the block 15 newtons is given so 15 into what about the clearance value so clearance is it's a 90 mm in diameter and vertically slows down to a 90 mm cylinder so cylinder is of 92 mm diameter but the piston is of the cylinder is of only 90 mm diameter so diametrically the clearance is 2 mm so on one side the clearance is 1 mm which is 10 to the power minus 3 meters so this is 10 to the power minus 3 meters divided by pi what about mu mu something is talked about mu okay mu is what you need to find okay then what is the terminal velocity 5 meters 5 centimeters per second okay so fine v is given so v is 5 centimeters per second v is 5 centimeters per second which means 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters per second okay so mu is not known to you mu is not known to you then what about d and l diameter is 90 length is 500 mm so 90 into 500 90 into 500 into 10 to the power minus 6 because everything is in SI units. Okay, so that's how we have done all the values. Now you just simplify, you will get the answer directly. Okay, so let us simplify. So if you simplify, 10, 5 cancels this 3 times, 3 cancels this 30 times, then this 10 power minus 2 will be cancelling here 10 power minus 1 times, then this 10 power minus 1 will cancel this 10 to the power minus 5 times, this 3 zeros will give a 100 as 10 square here. Okay, so if you see, this implies pi uh, 1 is equal to numerator everything got cancelled okay numerator there is one 10 square okay so this 5 is here still so 5 can cancel this 120 times okay so 20 divided by 3 is here so 3 pi mu so mu is how much 20 divided by 3 times of pi is the value in pascal second okay this is in si units so pascal second so let us calculate the value 20 by 3 pi 20 by 3 pi okay so 20 by 3 pi 2.122 2.122 pascal second is what you have okay so 2.122 pascal second is the dynamic viscosity of the oil which can actually make this block to fall at a terminal velocity of 5 meters per second 5 centimeters per second okay so if you check the answer 2.122 yes 2.12 is in between this range okay so practically look if i substitute some formulas and all you don't know how that formulas comes okay but here if you see just by simple force analysis look we haven't done anything here actually we have written the equation of motion we just integrated this that's it okay so after integration you know this is directly the substitution and calculations clear so this is a simple understanding way but you should be a little careful while doing these calculations and all cancellations and all generally it's my habit to write if they give you something like 0 0.04 something I, I am generally habituated to write as 4 into 10 power minus 2 so that i can cancel some powers actually okay if i want to directly use all these values for calculation i might have made a mess with the gate calculator but after seeing after simplification you have some small value 20 by 3 pi that's you can calculate easily okay did you all like this understanding did you all understand what is the force that is trying to stop the acceleration of the fluid sorry acceleration of this uh, cylinder so please type in the chat box did you all understand what is the force that is trying to stop or that is trying to slow down the uh, you know slow down the uh, cylinder velocity yes nice explanation good did you all enjoy this Oh yeah, I am shouting like this, so at least tell the answer in the comment box. Did you all understand this or not? Yes? Oh, love symbol. Thank you. Thank you, GK. Viscous force. Correct? Yes, it is basically the viscous force that is trying to stop the flow, actually. I mean, stop the cylinder. Okay, so that's why because of the cylindrical force, the velocity is coming down. Okay? 
गुड क्वेश्चन एंजॉय नाउ लेट अस गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओह दिस स्लाइड कैम इन बिटवीन नाउ सी हियर टू डिस्क ऑफ ट्वेंटी सेंटीमीटर डायमीटर आर प्लेस्ड वन एम एम अपार्ट and the gap is filled with an oil of viscosity 0.8 kg per meter second look here good explanation thanks abhinav thank you so now let me ask you one question if they give you dynamic viscosity value in kg per meter second but normally you are substituting all values in si units meter second this value is given in mks units but all other values you are substituting in si units do you need to do any conversion if value is given in kg per meter second means let us suppose if i want to substitute this value 0.8 in newton second per meter square do i need to multiply any conversion factors do i need to multiply any conversion factors please tell me do i need to multiply any conversion factors here if i want to convert kg per meter second value to newton second per meter square into si units do i need to do any conversion for example if i convert if i want to convert poise to newton second per meter square i need to multiply 10 to the power minus 1 can if, if i want to convert my value in poise to newton second per meter square i need to do some conversion 10 to the power minus 1 i need to multiply but here if something is given in kg per meter second do i need any conversion no Correct. I need not do any conversion because one newton second per meter square is same as one kg per meter second. So sometimes to confuse you, to make you in trouble, they will give the values in uh, of this dynamic viscosity in MKS units. But you need not do any conversion, okay? Because it's simple analysis. You can even understand one newton second per meter square. If you see one newton is nothing but kg meter per second square. Wait, mass into acceleration. Into second divided by meter square, so second cancels one time. Meter also cancels one time. So kg, of course, one is here kg per meter second. So one kg per meter second is same as one newton second per meter square. Okay, so you need not do any conversion. Okay, now let us continue the question. So this is the oil. The power required to rotate the upper disc at 600 rpm while holding the lower one stationary is dash watts. Look, what they are asking you. There is one disc which is like this. and this disc is fixed this disc is fixed now there is one more disc which is placed like this which is placed like this okay so which is placed like this so they are kept by some gap some clearance let us say some gap they have talked see let us suppose now what happened let us suppose if there is some small handle for this disc for this disc there is some small handle for example there is some small handle for this disc now keeping this bottom disc stationary if you want to rotate the upper disc they are asking you what is the torque that is required okay so let us see if this is the axis for example so this It has to be rotated at an angular velocity omega, for example. So 600 rpm, you can convert rpm value to omega. Okay, 496.1. Good. I think it's in the correct. It's the correct answer because it is in the range. So anyhow, let us see. So this diameter of the disc is given. So let us suppose radius. You are talking. This radius of the disc is given. So this oil, this space, basically, this space is filled with some oil of dynamic viscosity. Okay. So there is some oil. with some dynamic viscosity there is some oil with some dynamic viscosity now tell me one thing tell me one thing if i take different points of solid fluid contact means if i take these points of solid fluid contact they are at equal height from this fixed surface but when here you are not pulling this upper plate but actually you are rotating this upper plate correct so whenever you are actually rotating this upper plate then tell me when you are actually rotating this upper plate are these points at a equal radius of rotation tell me are these points at an equal radius of rotation are these points of solid fluid contact are they at equal radius of rotation from the rotational axis tell me so type in the chat box are they at equal are they at equal radius from this axis of rotation 
no correct yes they are not at equal radius of rotation so when they are not at equal radius of rotation definitely you understand one thing that radius is changing so linear velocity of those particles changes which means because if you see this complete plate is evolving this complete plate is rotating at an angular velocity omega radius is different so you know velocity linear velocity is equal to radius times omega so since r is not constant the linear velocity of that particles is not constant when linear velocity of the particles is not constant that means the velocity gradient at this point is not same as the velocity gradient at this point correct so what we'll do we'll do some integration okay so let us suppose if you take some small area at some small radius r so let us suppose if this small is from small radius and this is dr for example so from the top view you see okay so from the top view if you see you will get a circular plate so on that circular plate you are actually considering small area okay so now if you see the torque required dt for the evolution is equal to dt is equal to dt torque is force df into radius the small amount of force which you need to apply on that section to evolve it into radius r so what about df tau into da into r so what about tau into da so what is da so if you take a small strip of radius r with the thickness of dr then the area of the strip which is in contact with the oil is 2 pi r dr into radius so tau can be written from newton's law of viscosity mu into at this location here the velocity is zero here the velocity is small r times omega so small r times omega by the clearance between these two so into 2 pi r dr into small r so if you want the total torque what you will do total torque is equal to integration of this expression from small r equal to zero to small r is equal to capital r so pi mu omega by c is constant so 2 pi mu omega by c these are constants so 2 is constant pi is constant omega is constant c is constant mu is also constant so how many small as you have 1 2 3 so r cube dr is what you have so if you simplify this expression if you simplify you will get a result like this there is r power 4 by 4 so 2 gets cancelled so pi mu omega r power 4 by 2 c so if you write in terms of diameters this value is t is equal to pi mu omega d power 4 by 32 times of this clearance okay because if r is there here it is 2 but if you write in diameters 2 power 4 comes in between so let us see what is the total torque t is equal to pi into mu so what is mu mu is 0 0.8 so 8 into 10 to the power minus 1 omega so what about this guy omega omega is 600 rpm so you know omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 where n is the rpm so this is 600 rpm so 2 pi into 600 by 60 so if you simplify this this is 10 so total 20 times of pi radians per second so this is the angular velocity so mu is sorry omega is 20 pi so 20 times of pi into d power 4 so what is diameter 20 centimeters means 0 0.2 2 into 10 to the power minus 1 whole power 4 16 into 10 to the power minus 4 this value divided with 32 times of clearance so what is the gap between these two plates these two plates are placed at 1 mm apart so this gap small gap is 1 mm so 10 to the power minus 3 is what you have okay so once you punch some calculator and if you simplify you will get the value in watts because everything is in SI units so your answer what you are going to get is in watts so what are the units they are asking you they are asking you in watts okay good so let us simplify this value if you simplify this value we will get the answer so 10 power minus 3 this is 10 power minus 1 this gets cancelled 8 cancels this 4 times 2 cancels this 2 times and 2 cancels this 8 times so total you have 8 pi square into 10 power minus 1 correct so 8 pi square into 10 power minus 1 means 0.8 times of pi square okay you have some more thing pi mu omega d power 4 by 32 times of this clearance correct so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you pi mu omega d power 4 by 32 c pi mu omega omega is 2 pi n by 60 so they are asking you power correct so they are asking you for the power actually so power is equal to torque into omega torque into omega so p is equal to 0 0.8 pi square into 20 pi is what you have here okay so these many watts so if you cancel this 0 and this 0.8 as 8 times so this is 16 pi cube watts is what you have for the 
power. So if you simplify this, 16 times of pi cube. Let us calculate pi cube into 16. So if you see 496.14. Okay. So 496.1 watts is what you have here. Okay. So the power required for the rotation is 496.1 times of watts. Okay. So torque we have to calculate power. Yes, of course. Just torque if you multiply with angular velocity, you will get power value. Yes. Correct. So if you just multiply this torque value with angular velocity, you will get power. So that's it. Okay. I'm sorry. Here I have written the units watts. Sorry, sorry. This is Newton meter. Okay. So torque is always in Newton meter. Okay. So 16 pi cube, calculating the value of 16 pi cube is very simple. Then calculating this complete value into omega, all these things. Okay. So 496.1 watts. Clear? So let's go for the next question. A skater weighing 900 Newton skates at 54 kilometers per hour on ice at 0 degrees Celsius. The average skating area supporting him is 12 centimeters square and the effective dynamic coefficient of friction between the skates and the ice is 0 0.02. If there is actually a thin film of water between the skates and the ice, the average thickness of the film is dash into 10 cube mm. Okay, so let us see. They have given viscosity of water is 1 centipoise. This is dynamic viscosity. Why? How do I know this is dynamic viscosity? Because here it is given, it is the unit sign poise. Okay, so now let us see. What is the physics that's happening? Have you ever seen skating videos? People skating on ice? Have you seen these videos? People skating on ice? Actually? So, if you see these videos, normally the skater presses the shoe onto the ice. So, what happens because of this pressure, there is a slight water film which gets developed on the ice. Okay? So, that's how the skater will actually skid on the ice actually. Okay? So, if you see on ice, there is one small very thin layer of ice. Uh, sorry, thin layer of water which gets formed and because of the balance due to the friction and the movement due to the, uh, you know, the, the force which is applied by the skater, this, uh, uh, you know, this skating is actually possible. So, now let us see, try to understand few, some things here, okay. So, let us suppose this is the ice block, for example. This is the ice and let us suppose this is the base of shoe of the skater example okay so let us suppose this is some shoe base uh, sole of the shoe this is the skating shoe and this is ice of course now before going for some mathematics try to understand the physics that's taking place here normally because of the solid portions in contact actually ice and this uh, shoe are in contact so definitely there will be some friction force which is trying to act in this direction which is trying to act in this direction. So, this is friction force, F friction, F friction, okay. So, whenever the skater is trying to move, means basically when the skating shoe is trying to move forward, there is definitely some friction on the back direction. But what this person is doing, this person is trying to move forward, means he is trying to apply certain velocity gradient in the ice layer, okay. So, if you see, if there is some water here in this location, if there is some water here, what he is trying to do? This person is trying to pull this shoe, correct? Means he is trying to apply some force F in this direction. Force F he is trying to apply in this direction, correct? Because he wants to move on the water layer. So that means if this person has to move on the water layer, then definitely this he should, he or she should try to create some water layer means they should try to create some velocity gradient of the water yes so now if you see if this person is skating at some uniform velocity tell me one thing should these two forces be equal means whatever is the friction that's lying between the shoe and the ice the same force should be applied by this person to skate so that this motion is possible yes or no means at equilibrium at equilibrium means if skater is moving at uniform velocity at equilibrium means at uniform velocity at uniform velocity, at uniform velocity, this frictional force which is created due to the friction should be balanced by the force which is applied by the skater. So, F skating. Yes or no? These two should be equal or not? 
So I think printing mistake in place of 10 power minus 3 he has written 10 cube. Okay, let us see because normally the ice cube layer will be very thin. So let us suppose into 10 cube mm. No, then uh, yes, I think it should be 10 power minus 3. Even I think it is 10 power minus 3. There could be some typing, you know, that would have taken place here. So 10 power minus 3. Okay, let us see. Because generally, if you see, ice layer will be this water layer which is formed will be very, very thin. Okay. Now, let us see this value. So, first of all, did you understand the physics what's happening here? If you see carefully, this is F friction and this is F of the skating shoe. So, under equilibrium, whatever is the friction force due to the motion, that same friction force has to be applied by the skater to move at uniform velocity. Yes. So, did you understand this? So, please type in the chat box if this is clear to you. If this is clear to you, then please type in the chat box. Clear? Now, if this is fine, then let us see. What is the friction force? Dynamic coefficient of friction. So, mu, mu you will come uh, confused with these values. So, let us see. Let us substitute the values. So, frictional value is, so frictional value is how much? 0 0.02 is the coefficient of friction. 0 0.02 into normal reaction because you know f is equal to mu friction into n okay so 0 0.02 into what is the normal reaction normal reaction is nothing but weight of the person okay because if you see this total weight is given which is 900 newtons so 900 newtons so this is the total friction force now what is the force that the person is applying here so this force is making this shoe to move at 54 meters per sorry 54 kilometers per second sorry kilometers per hour so if you see 54 kilometers per hour is nothing but if you simplify 54 into 5 by 18 meters per second so if you simplify this is 3 so total 15 meters per second he is skating at very high speed 15 meters in one second is very high speed actually okay so 15 meters per second so whenever this shoe is moving at 15 meters per second this top layer of water which is in contact with the plate this top layer of water which is in contact with the shoe will also move at same 15 meters per second but this ice is constant because he generally skates on some ice block which is constant so here if you see here the velocity is zero here the velocity is zero but here the velocity is some 15 meters per second so there is small velocity gradient which is getting developed in this water so what is the force that is required to create this velocity gradient mu of water into dynamic this velocity gradient which is v by this clearance which is the thickness of the ice block uh, i mean this thickness of the water layer which is here so this is the thickness of the water layer into area so what is the shoe area that's in contact supporting him is 12 centimeter square so 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 so velocity is known dynamic viscosity of water is given 1 centipoise so definitely you can get this value c that's it okay so let us calculate here so if you calculate here then 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 9 into 10 square is equal to dynamic viscosity 1 centipoise poise is 10 power minus 1 centi means 10 power minus 2 so total 10 to the power minus 3 newton meter per newton second per meter square into velocity 15 meters per second divided by the clearance c into 12 into 10 to the power minus 4 so this is the total value total expression so one equation one unknown you can simplify so this two gets cancelled two cancels this six times nine three table this three cancels this and this three table five times then this three cancels this two times so total you have this c is the only thing in denominator so c is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 into 10 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters actually okay so this is in meters so if this is in meters then if you want to write this in mm you can eliminate this 10 power minus 3 so 10 into 10 to the power minus 4 mm is what you will have here okay so which means if you see uh, 10 to the power minus 3 is given so if you write only 10 to the power minus 3 this is 0 0.1 actually okay so 0 0.1 is what you have actually so if you write it 10 power minus 3 we can write this 0 0.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm okay so that's why if you see this value is 0 0.1 actually okay so 0 point uh, sorry we, we made some mistake here did we leave any 10 so once check this calculation did we leave any 10 here 0 0.02 is this value 900 newtons is the friction so 54 into 5 by 18 is 3 5 is 15 
centi dynamic viscosity of water is how much? 1 centi poise. Centi is centi is 10 to the power minus uh, you know deci centi poise. So poise is again 10 to the power minus 1. Correct? So 10 to the power minus 3. I hope it's clear, right? Centi poise. So centi means 10 to the power minus 2, correct? Centimeter is 10 to the power minus 2 meters. So centi gives you 10 to the power minus 2. 1 in place of 0 0.1. Yes, correct. Here, here we made this mistake. So 1, last step. Conversion. Some 10 power minus 1 conversion we made. Yes, at this place. In the last line, we have made 1 uh, 0 excess. So 1 into 10 to the power minus 3. So this value is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3. Okay. 1 into 10 to the power minus 3. So 1 is within this range. 0 0.98 to 1.02. Because you see, if you delete the 0, you'll get 10 power minus 3 here. So 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm. Yes, correct. In the last line, we made some, uh, you know, excess 0. So that's the reason. Clear? So this is 1 mm. So did you all understand this question? Basically, there is some fictional force that's acting between the shoe and the, you know, eyes. So what's happening here? In order to move forward, this person has to create certain shear stress on this fluid okay so this person has to create certain shear stress but this motion has some dynamic friction involved because of some solid particles in contact so if you see this frictional force has to be balanced by this skating shoe so that's why this skating shoe force is nothing but the force which is created to create a shear a velocity gradient of 15 by c and this is the fictional uh, thing actually okay good explanation Thank you. So now let us go for this question. So this is basically 1 uh, into 10 to the power minus 3 mm. So let us go for the next question. If shear stress tau and shear rate du by dy relationship of a material is plotted with a tau on the y-axis and du by dy on x-axis, the behavior of an ideal fluid is exhibited by. They are asking you. Okay. So tell me. They have asked you something like this. There is this tau versus du by dy axis. Okay. So this is this tau versus du by dy axis. Tau versus du by dy axis. Okay. So whenever there is tau versus du by dy axis, what is how means basically how the ideal fluid is actually denoted. So tell me one thing. What is ideal fluid basically? What is ideal fluid? What is an ideal fluid? Ideal fluids generally do not have any viscosity, correct? You know this. So ideal fluids, they don't have any viscosity. And you know, normally ideal fluids, if you see, ideal fluids are those fluids as soon as you keep on just applying some shear stress, okay? Means let us suppose water, for example, is an ideal fluid. If you have a transparent bottle, you might have, I might have shown you. So if there is a transparent bottle, if you slightly tilt the bottle, then what happens? The fluid continuously flows or else. If you see, let us suppose there is an there is a, uh, for example, if there is some uh, plane like this, horizontal plane, okay? So on this horizontal plane, you have kept some water, some water layer, okay? Some water layer is there. Now let us suppose if you apply small shear stress, means if you slightly incline the plane, then what happens? Immediately water starts flowing, correct? Immediately water starts flowing, okay? I'm repeating, whenever you have a horizontal plane, let us suppose if there is some width of water, some height of water column on this, then as soon as you just uh, tilt slightly this plane immediately water starts flowing means the velocity gradient keep on increasing so even for small values of shear stress applied your du by dy values are very large so if you see even for large du by dy values your shear stress value is very less okay means this shear stress is almost zero so the line which consists of which is along this x axis means basically along this du by dy axis is the ideal sol fluid okay so this is ideal fluid now, here I would like to take one more minute and explain few things. Can you tell me what is ideal solid line? What is ideal solid line? What is ideal solid line? So, please type in the chat box. Can you tell me what is ideal solid line here? If I take an ideal solid, then if on an ideal solid, let us suppose you have applied some high amount of shear stress. Will there be any deformation? Will there be any velocity of the layers of the solid which are moving? Let us suppose if I take a solid. Let us suppose if I apply some very high shear stress. Then even in some high shear stress, if the solid is perfectly visible, if it's an ideal solid, then will there be any deformation of layers? Will there be any U? 
will there be any velocity with which the layers will try to move no right the layers do not try to move actually here so in such case we have this line for the ideal solid this line is for ideal solid okay so this line is for ideal solid and you have some newtonian fluid like this okay so this is for newtonian fluid newtonian fluid and of course in your crash course you will also talk about very other fluids like shear thickening fluid uh, sorry shear thickening fluids shear thinning fluids okay dilatant you know pseudoplastic we'll talk about all these things okay so shear thickening why it's called shear thickening because if you see the slope of the graph keeps on increasing why it's called shear thinning because the slope of the graph keep on decreasing we'll see there is one if i teach then definitely i'll come here we'll talk about something called oswald devalis model and we'll talk about this uh, shear thickening and shear thinning fluids okay but right now since this is one theoretical question which is asked some two to three times in gate examination so i thought of putting this simple question here okay so it is the positive x-axis clear so it is b C simple straight away simple question so let us solve this question a shaft of diameter d how many questions we have we have only 10 minutes of time left so okay two more questions good we have planned accordingly so let us see here a shaft of diameter d and length l is rotating at n rotations per minute in a journal bearing now tell me if rpm is n n rpm so what about omega 2 pi n by 60 correct let us keep that because generally this rotations we talk in terms of omega okay now in a journal bearing the clearance between the shaft and the bearing is y so the clearance between the shaft and the bearing is actually y and is filled with a viscous oil of dynamic viscosity mu the expression for the power absorbed in overcoming the viscous resistance is calculated as mu l n square by 3600 y into pi d whole power m. The value of m is dash. Look, what a beautiful question. They have asked you the power that is wasted in overcoming the frictional resistance is given by this expression mu l n square by 3600 y into pi d power m. So they are asking you what is the value of m here. Okay, so let us check here. If you see, there is a shaft like this. There is some 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 small shaft like this. And this shaft has an axis. This shaft has an axis. Okay. So this shaft has an axis so this shaft is placed in a bearing this shaft is placed in some bearing the shaft is placed inside some bearing so it's given the clearance between the shaft and the bearing is c so this clearance is actually c directly okay and the length of the shaft is l so length of the shaft is l now this shaft is rotated at some omega rpm okay so this shaft is rotated at some omega rpm so they are asking you what is the torque that is required correct so power i think power they have asked so power used in this frictional resistance okay so if you see these are these are the points of fluid solid contact correct so these are the points of fluid solid contact and if you see from the axis of rotation all these points are at uniform distance okay so from this axis of rotation all these points are at uniform uh, radius okay so if you see a shaft of diameter d and length l is rotating at n rpms in a journal bearing the distance the clearance between the shaft is y so if you see this clearance they have given you as y this clearance is y so now let us calculate the power power is equal to torque into omega torque into omega so what is torque force acting on the shaft into radius so radius is same all over so it is at a radius of d by 2 at every given location so it is d by 2 times omega so what about force force is nothing but shear stress into total area because all these points are at same radius you need not go for the integration you can directly solve this so into area is pi dl is the total area of contact 
So did you all understand why I'm not doing any integration? Because you need not do any integration because actually if you see this all points of ADS means all points of solid fluid contact at equal ADS from the axis of rotation. So that's why you need not do any integration. You can directly write the value. So what is tau? Dynamic viscosity times this velocity gradient. So if you see all these points are at ADS of d by 2. So d by 2 times of omega. So d by 2 times of omega this velocity gradient is coming within a clearance of y actually. So this is the shear stress that is acting mu into velocity gradient at any given location is d by 2 times omega by l because d by 2 into omega is the velocity between this fixed and this shaft line and this is happening in a gap of y into d by 2 times of omega. So if you simplify this result into pi dl is also there. Correct? So into pi dl is also there here. So if you simplify the result pi mu omega square pi mu omega square l pi 4y into d cube d cube is here. Okay. So mu is there d cube is there omega square is there pi l is also there 4y is also there. So this is the expression for the total power fictional power. But this fictional power is given in terms of n actually here. Okay. n is given instead of omega. So let us see what is this value. So omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. So n square omega square is there. So you can write this expression as pi mu omega square can be written as 4 pi square n square by 60 square is 3600 by 4y by 4 y into L d cube is there. Okay. So L d cube is also there here L d cube. So if you simplify the result 4 and 4 gets cancelled. So you can write this as mu times of n square by 3600 into L y is also there here into pi cube d cube is there here. So this can be written as mu n square L by 3600 y times pi d whole cube. Okay. So if you see this expression and this expression mu L n square mu L n square divided by 3600 y divided by 3600 y into pi d whole power m into pi d whole cube. So now you tell me what is the value of m here? So in what month FM one short series will start? FM uh, will start hopefully from uh, you know Jan, okay December somewhere in between, okay? On an average, I'm telling you. Clear? So now tell me what is the value of this M value? So this is given as M value here. So this value is nothing but your M value. So M value is actually three in this case. Okay? So this is one good question again. So for doing the analysis here. Did you all understand why I did not do any integration here? Because the points of solid, solid fluid contact are at equal distance from the axis of rotation. So you take velocity gradient at any location, the velocity gradient remains same. So that's why directly I multiplied shear stress with the total area. That's the reason. Okay. So M value is equal to 3, which we have actually given here. Answer 3 to 3. Okay. So let's go for one last question, I think. Yes, this is the last question. Fine. Okay. Small question. We have five minutes more. So let us solve this question. A steel needle of specific gravity 7.84 float on a liquid surface. The maximum diameter of the needle is dash mm. Okay. So round off to two decimal places. Neglect bion C and assume a contact angle zero. Take sigma of water is equal to actually it is water needle interface. Okay. Water needle interface. is 0 0.073 Newton per meter density of water G is given. Look, normally you see some small ants walking on water, some needle. If you drop some small needle, the needle will actually float on water. Did you see these things anytime? Normally you see sometimes small insects normally which are very thin. Actually, they actually can walk on water. Correct. Have you seen this? Of course, you can also see people walking on ma uh, people walking on water. That is actually some magic. Okay, it's not because of surface tension. What they do, they will create a plastic board which can float on water and also being transparent so that nobody recognizes there is a board there. Okay, so that's some different magic. But actually, if you see, as per physics, if you see, generally this uh, 
light objects very light objects like a small ants or small uh, insects or you can see small needle kind of things they actually float on water because the weight of those objects is balanced by the surface tension force that is acting on the needle okay so now if you see let us suppose if there is an if there is a needle okay if there is a needle i am drawing the side view and let us suppose i am drawing the front view actually so let us suppose i am drawing the side view also sides So let us suppose there is some small needle like this. There is some small needle. Now, what happens? This needle is on water. So when this needle is on water, there will be surface tension force acting at both the circumferences. Correct? So if you see on both sides, means if you see along the length of the needle, along the length of the needle, there is water solid contact. So that's why there is surface tension at two ends. So if you see, this is basically the surface tension force which is acting all over the surface. Means let us suppose if this is my needle, then there is surface tension force along this edge and also from the inner edge also there is certain surface tension force. That's what I have taken here. Now, you know, this surface tension force is basically sigma into L and this surface tension force is also sigma into L because sigma is per unit length. So total length of the needle, let us suppose if it's L. L is the length of the needle. So total, we have this total length of the needle as L here. Okay. So L sigma into L. So, and if you see this needle, the needle weight is acting in the downward direction. So this is W actually. Okay. So this is W. So this weight W is balanced by two times of sigma into L. Did you all understand how we have sigma into L basically here? Yes. So please type in the chat box. Is this clear to all of you? Did you all understand how this weight is supported by these two forces in the upward direction? Because per unit length, the surface tension force is sigma. So for length L, sigma into L is the total surface tension force. Since surface tension force is acting at two interfaces, so two times of sigma into L is equal to the weight of the block, uh, th the weight of the needle. Okay. So is this clear to all of you? Yes. So now if you see the weight is actually is equal to means weight is equal to 2 times of sigma into L. So what is the weight of the needle? What they are asking you? A needle of specific gravity is given. So maximum diameter of the needle. So let us see weight can be written as density of the fluid time. Sorry, density of the needle. Density of the needle into di volume pi by 4 d square L into G. This is equal to 2 times of sigma into L. So L and L gets cancelled. So what about density of this, uh, you know, needle? So specific gravity of the needle into density of water into pi by 4 d square into G is equal to 2 times of sigma is what you have here. 2 times of sigma. Okay. So if you simplify this. Okay. So now, yes. So if you simplify this, if you simplify this, d square is equal to 8 sigma by 8 sigma by specific gravity into pi into density of water into gravity. These are the things that you have here. So if you simplify 8 times of 8 times of sigma value 0 0.073. Let us substitute directly no 10 power minus 1 and all this time divided by specific gravity. Specific gravity is how much 7.84 7.84 into pi into density of water is how much? They have talked 1000 and 9.81. So 1000 and 9.81. So these many meters square. Okay. So if you want a D value, D is nothing but D is square root of this complete value, which means square root of this complete value. And the answer is going to be in meters because everything we have substituted in SI units. Okay. So let us suppose if this is the needle, then there is some small water interface. There is some small water interface around this needle. So this small water interface will actually try to exert some surface tension forces along the length of the needle. Okay. So now if you see this calculation, 8 into 0.73, 8 into 0 0.073. So 8 into 0 0.073. So this value divided by this value divided by 7.84 7.84 into 1000 into 9.81. So 9810 9810 into pi. 
so this is the value so if you take a square root 0 0.00155 0 0.00155 so in mm if you see this 1.55 mm is the diameter of the needle normally you see needles are very you know sharp actually and thin so 1.55 mm is the diameter of the needle so 1.55 is in between this 1.5 to 1.6 okay so 1.55 mm okay rajiv so basically what i'm telling is whenever there is a needle like this floating in water then means basically if you see if you see a needle like this if you see a needle like this so if you see a needle like this some needle like this then there is some water interface which is surrounding this needle like this point correct so at this locations there will be surface tension similarly at this location also surface tension like this the surface tension forces will take throughout the length okay so that's why this is what in the front view i have shown you means if you see this in the front view you will see the surface tension forces so in the top view you have the uh, you know in the side view you see that there is surface tension force acting along this length and also along this length so that's why i have represented this with two surface tension forces clear okay fine so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you 1.556 mm is the correct answer okay so last two questions i have kept some simple questions so that you feel happy at least okay remaining questions those are some nice questions actually when clearance is changing when ice and uh, you know ice uh, skating on ice all these questions are some really good questions okay what will be topics for tomorrow's class pressure and its measurement okay so we'll talk about manometers uh, we'll, we'll talk about different things pressure variations all these things okay so did you all enjoy this class did you all understand uh, and did you all feel that you have learned some new ways of solving one two questions that sliding velocity why velocity decreases after some time or why velocity actually remains constant after some time why in this actual clearance the force is depending on logarithm all these things okay so let's see there is some more questions no thank you okay fine then so please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you so yes thank you all so tomorrow we'll meet again total 10 lectures i'm going to take for 10 days the class will be from monday to friday from 11 o'clock to 1 uh, you know 1 p.m actually 11 a.m to 1 p.m every monday to friday so tomorrow is friday so tomorrow we have this class again 11 p.m to 1 p.m we'll talk on pressure and its measurements okay so we'll talk about pressure variations manometers all these things okay piezometer inclined tube manometers inverted tube manometers we'll talk about all these things in tomorrow's session okay clear fine then so thank you all even i enjoyed this session some of you have asked some nice questions and uh, you know there is a bit of appreciation as well in between thank you and uh, i hope i'm not boring you too much okay so we'll meet tomorrow and of course as things goes on i'll try to use hindi also in between okay fine okay then thank you all we'll meet tomorrow at 11 pm uh, sorry 11 am again okay 11 am and we'll take the class till 1 pm okay thank you all thank you thank you all so we'll meet tomorrow at 11 am again thank you all thank you bye 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 take care